So if you don't want to, you know, see this travel nodes and it looks like, oh, why I should, because that is going to make my model visualize not that great. So you can go in this, right click on this network view mode and you can say, you know, NAM, and you can have a just in dot visible there in your complete simulation model. And when you want that to come back, click on the same node, right click, go into the properties and show on, okay. Hello guys, welcome to another grand interesting video on your Lean Sim Corp channel. And in this today's video, we are going to understand about key concepts about travel systems in FlexSim. And because these are very important systems in FlexSim in order to create a simulation model, we are going to understand that in detail. So we are going to have a videos and video series which are going to come onto this domain where we will be understanding travel and transportation in detail where we will be covering about travel networks a star navigation gis navigation working with them you know and multiple stuffs in there okay we have already covered about working with task executors in our last video and video series where we understood concepts of task sequence logic how task sequences are created how those works, what is coordinate task sequences, priorities, preemptions, and task logic. So if you haven't watched that, I request you to watch that video series which is already released onto our you know, YouTube channel and onto our premium content for some of our premium videos. So now, talking about the key concepts about travel, we will be now starting with and I hope you are going to hit a like, share and subscribe to the video and the channel and keep watching video until end of the you know, complete series. So, so talking about what? What is travel? You know, travel is nothing but if you see in the model, there are two things. The entity is moving from one location to another. Okay, that is what is travel and you know, without travel, simulation is going to be none of the use right so the more efficient your travel is that accurate your simulation model is going to be so this topic is going to help us provide a high level overview of different tools for you know, controlling the travel paths for task executors such as operators transporters and task executor objects okay by default, when a task executor travels between the two objects, Flexim will simply choose the shortest distance between two points, okay, a straight line. So if you see here, this is what I was talking about. So the Flexim is using a shortest distance to travel, you know, by default, okay. But if you see, ideally, it is not a case in a factory or any way where you're simulating a concept right there are going to be routes there are going to be paths which needs to be followed in order to make simulation more realistic but ideally flex and chooses the shortest part while default travel logic might meet your simulation needs but it in many cases it won't because it would not replicate the exact process okay so if task executor uses the default travel systems they might end up traveling into other objects which i you know, which we just uh, saw or through barriers such as walls, you know, and stuff like that, which you can see how the behavior is taking place here between the uh, registration table and, you know, multiple other stuffs. okay? So using one of the FlexSim travel tool instead of travel default system will allow you to create more accurate paths. You can define the specific travel paths that task executors should use or you can create barriers that task executors will not need to travel around such as walls. In other words, you will be able to create more accurate travel paths for your task executors. Travel accuracy has two main objectives and advantages, okay? So what would that be is accurate travel paths will give you better statistics. Okay, if your task executors aren't traveling or the shortest distance between two points, that means that the travel time might be longer, right? Even seemingly minor differences in the travel time and the distances can have a larger impact on the overall statistics of your simulation model type. So you see, this is actual path and the route. And you know, definitely that path is going to require more time 
but by default they are traveling from that registration table in middle which is definitely going to impact the statistics. Another main advantage is accurate travel paths will look better visually. Okay, with us easy travel in a straight path between two objects, sometimes we can them traveling in a way they appear, you know, visually may appear incorrect. For example, operator traveling through our registration, right? So using travel systems to force task executors to work around objects or barriers will help the model look more correct visually. Flexim has two different tools to create different travel systems for task executors. Okay, one is travel networks, which we already have been created. Here you can see this green dot, right? Green arrows in the dot. Using this tool, you will define the specific path that the task executors can use to get from one location to another in the simulation model. While there is a A star navigation, which you can see here, we've already created a video on A star navigation, understanding basics of that. If you haven't watched that, you can watch that. But that is the another travel system which you can use. That is A star navigation. Using this tool, you can create travel barriers for the task executors. Any fixed resources can connect to the A star system. Also, will be treated as a barrier that cannot be passed through directly. The A star navigator will then use these barriers and the travel threshold or our fixed resources to calculate the shortest distance between two locations. Okay, now the best part is that you can make both systems invisible. Okay, so if you don't want to, you know, see this travel nodes and it looks like, oh, why I should, because that is going to make my model visualize not that great. So you can go in this, right click on this network view mode and you can say, you know, NAM, and you can have a just in dot visible there in your complete simulation model. And then you want that to come back, click on the same node, right click, go into the properties and show all, okay? So this is how you can also make the systems visible and invisible, okay? For premium content, do not forget to visit our website, leansimcorp.com where you will be getting all these premium contents available. So talking about what, what things you're going to get in, you're going to get in, you know, simulation solutions. You're going to get premium training classes for simulation stuff. You will be getting 3DS model file support. You can buy modules. You can access to simulation case studies. You can visit our services. Also, you can visit the blogs which you're going to get. So I was talking about simulation solutions, right? You can schedule one-on-one -on -one session with us, you know, for training and details. You can access our digital assets like learning center, okay? So here comes, you know, the booking online appointment. Talking about training classes, you can access premium training classes once you are going to purchase our subscriptions. You will be able to, you know, access our training classes which are listed out here and these are continuously getting upgraded guys talking about blogs here we bring in you know blogs from travel experiences health devotionals like industrial engineering personality development simulation tech and lot more interesting and exciting so do not forget to visit our website leansimcorp.com for premium content blogs and lots more